Yeah, be clear. I have absolutely no problem with people wanting to identify with whatever they want. Uh, transgender in this case, I don't care. In fact, uh, a friend of mine who is transgender just sent me a text. Hello, Catherine. Uh, love to catch up someday with you too. But listen, there is another aspect to this, though. I love stories of people overcoming incredible odds to be the best at their sport, like Austin Killips, who on Sunday won the prestigious Tour of the Gila women's bike race in New Mexico. Now, uh, that's Killips in the middle, the tallest one there. Now, what odds that she had to really battle to beat all those other women? I mean, Killips was born a man and yet still, unbelievably, was strong enough to win against women. Who could have predicted that? Born a man, but also still strong enough also to dismiss all those bad sports who said it wasn't fair to have a born male cyclist competing against women and still generous enough uh, also to be friends with the other cyclists. Have you had any issues or, you know, things personally you're okay uh, as far as uh, racing in the peloton? I, I've, I've got a lot, a lot of friends here and, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm here because, you know, sport is, uh, is uh, you know, community is, is a central part of sport and, you know, I'm here to, you know, have fun with my friends. In fact, it is amazing. What a coincidence again that so many trans women have somehow managed to overcome the physical weakness to beat women in cycling. Like Tiffany Thomas, for instance. Like Masters World Cycling Champion Rachel McKinnon. Like Emily Bridges and Lily Chant, who came first and second in last year's uh, Thundercroft uh, Women's Race in Britain. Or like... Leia Genis, I don't know how to pronounce her name, she's the big unit on the left, who medalled at uh, America's Cycling Elite Track National Championships last year. Or like Gillian Bearden, another transgender woman who won uh, a US Women's Masters title. Or like Joanne Lingwood did last year, or Sarah Stearns before them, winning gold, silver and bronze. What a coincidence. Joining me on Culture Wars is Rowan Dean, editor of The Spectator Australia and host of Outsiders on Sky News every Sunday at 9am. Rowan, can you explain this mystery, how so many transgender women somehow managed to beat women in cycling? They couldn't possibly have some natural advantage, could they, when we were told they're really women themselves and you shouldn't uh, be upset if they compete against other women? Andrew Bolt. Andrew Bolt. What am I going to do with you? I detect a note of cynicism there in your, your preamble, a, a suggestion somehow that perhaps these transgender women might have some biological advantage over the women they are defeating all around the world. Now, Andrew, I've tried to explain to you before, the modern science of biology is settled. It is settled and we now know definitively that despite the fact you might be born in the womb and, and, and labelled as a male, you might be born nine months gestating in the womb with every cell, every piece of DNA saying you are male, you are a man. You might then spend your childhood where every fibre of you, every muscle, every sinew, every cell in your body is saying you are male, you are male, and you are stronger, you are fitter because you're going to protect women. Even though that might be the case, Andrew, the reality of modern science is the moment you stick on a frock or the moment you put on the lippy, all those biological advantages disappear, millions of years of DNA, cells, that all goes out the window and you are playing on an equal playing field with the females because you now identify in your mind as a woman. That's the modern science and it's settled, Andrew. And how dare you be cynical and suggest that there might be uh, any other issues at play here. Although, on a serious note, Andrew, what I will tell you is that having uh, interviewed uh, women who are in sports competing with transgender women, the reason many of them do not speak up about this obscenity is that they are terrified to speak up, Andrew. They are terrified that they will be labelled 
transphobic, they may lose their position in their sport, the elite sport that they've worked so hard at, if they dare speak up, they will be attacked, they will be vilified. This is one of the greatest obscenities in the modern world, that we are allowing young girls, young women, athletes, who uh, have, have devoted their energies, their lives, to try and be the best in their sport, and we're sitting back, the world is sitting back, mocking them, ridiculing them, and saying, oh, no, blokes in a dress or a frock or a uh, wig or a bit of lippy, oh, yeah, they're women as well, they can compete, because it's so fair to them. It's abhorrent, and well, men have I've to speak I've got to say, up, you know, some women... And women have to speak Some transgender up. women actually do undergo procedures, and they take testosterone-lowering drugs, and they do all... And, and, you know, it's more than putting on lipstick and, and all that kind of... I've got all that. But when you see this record of success in cycling of transgender women, you've got to think that the sort of rules they have, you must have no more testosterone than this, it clearly isn't working. And for the women who are born women, the results can be devastating. If you're a third instead of first because you were knocked back a couple of places by transgender competitors, then you miss out on sponsorship, profile, and so you can't make a career of it. And I don't think that is really fair. Now, Rowan, I want another example of how nature is unfair and will always beat ideology. This time, we're told that eating meat, uh, we're often told that eating meat is racist or actually speciesist. You know, how dare we women, uh, we humans, think that we've got the right to eat other animals? And besides, it's, uh, you know, really bad for the planet. But now almost a 1,000 academics from leading universities around the world have signed an initiative which says, you know, meat is too important to become the victim of zealotry. Eating meat provides essential nutrients, health-promoting compounds, many of which are lacking in diets, even among populations, you know, people with lots of money to be able to afford supplements, etc. In other words, Rowan, nature didn't design us to be vegans and animal liberationists. How mortifying is that? Well, this is exactly the flip side of what we were just talking about. The modern left are determined that they, that the political left, that the neo-Marxist, cultural Marxists, can uh, basically are greater than nature. If they say a man is a woman, then biology is gone. If they say that uh, millions of years of eating meat, no, 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 we don't want you to eat meat because we're going to save the planet if you don't eat meat or some nonsense, they say it and then that we're... Therefore, all science, everything else goes out the window. This is the same mob who tell us that uh, all sorts of things about uh, climate change and so on. The cultural Marxists are determined to overturn reality and we must not let them because once you see these poor kids are confused, they go to school, they get taught this rubbish, they come away thinking, oh, I'm saving the planet by not eating meat. All we are doing is weakening the West uh, we are uh, weakening ourselves as human beings. We are weakening our morality. Uh, we are weakening our, uh, I guess, our fertility, ultimately. Uh, if we are determined to ignore nature and allow cultural Marxists to tell us their version of how they would like nature to be. And this is, all these things are linked to Andrew and we're seeing, uh, we're seeing the chooks coming home to roost. Eat a steak. Eat a steak if you enjoy it. If you don't want to eat a steak, don't. But the idea that somehow you are saving the planet, these scientists are finally are speaking up. I think people are starting to speak up about this madness because if you are a genuine scientist, Andrew, you would recognise the, the, the lunacy of the transgender issue and you would recognise the lunacy of the vegan issue and how dangerous these things are. And I might say there are a couple of other scientific things, but we won't go into those as well. Well, Rowan, you say scientists are starting to speak out. I need to see more scientists. They are there. They get ignored by the media. Their reputations get trashed. Speak out about the global warming. Wild exaggeration. Then I'll believe that the age of reason has returned. It's not dead, as I uh, <laughs> uh, keep suspecting. Rowan Dean, uh, thank you so much for your time, mate. Really appreciate it.